Hold on, folks. Give me just a second here. All right, you probably have all been wondering, where have I been? I've been missing in action for nearly two weeks now for doing any live streaming. Well, that's because I have to work for a living to be able to make a living to pay my bills. You guys can change all of that by going to my website, politidict.com, and clicking that support button and making a contribution today. Every penny goes right back into making sure that I don't have to work for a living, but I can do what I really enjoy doing, which is following politics, Alaska politics, national politics, and getting the latest and greatest information to you. But when it comes to choice, putting food on the table, or following politics and keeping you informed, food on the table will always come first. All right, let's get back into what we had witnessed today. Today we had testimony for, given from Alaskans in regards to the different bills that they have presented today. SB 53, SJR 5, 6, and 7. The only one they did not talk about was SJR 1, um, which I gave testimony about myself personally. Wanted to make sure that got plugged in there. First, let's go through the bills. We got SB 53 and SJR 6. These two are darn near identical bills. The only difference is in the language of how they, instead of like SB 53, combines the ERA and the corpus of the account into one. So there is no longer a separate account for both of them. They are now put into one account. SB 53 also changes the language to where it's no longer a statutory PFD, but is based still on a formula but this formula is up to the discretion of the legislators on whether or not that formula stays the way it is written. They can go and come back later and say, SJR5, we put the budget cap on it uh, at $6 billion. This budget cap means that you will no longer be able to spend above $6 billion a year. The permanent fund dividend is put underneath that cap. So we'll give you a scenario here. This last past year, the budget was $5.2 billion. By the time they were through it, it reached $5.4 billion. And that left only $600 million left to pay us a permanent fund dividend with equates to basically a $1,000 PFD that we saw. There is nothing in this legislation that protects the PFD from being eroded away. So this year, they come out and they say we have a budget that we want to present so far it's somewhere around 4.8 billion dollars uh, just like we've seen in all the past previous years this budget is going to increase it's going to grow substantially in size so let's pretend they don't get to 5.4 billion but they instead they get to 5.6 billion under the SJR 5 capping of the budget they have only $6 billion they are allowed to spend. So they spend $5.6 billion on the state and capital budget, leaving only $400 million left for the permanent fund dividend. Roughly equates out to be an $800 PFD. <coughs> Excuse me. Now the following year after that, they say, oh man, our expenses have gone up. we got to spend more. Uh, we, we can't afford to give you guys the, the same amount. We need to spend another $100 million. They spend now $5.7 billion on the state and capital budget, leaving only $300 million left over for our permanent fund dividends. So now we see a $500 PFD each with that $300 million that was left over. Now we're in the year, year number three, and they come up and say, hey, you know, our expenses, our special interests out there want more money. Our failing K through 12 system that has the worst performance in the nation. In fact, we are ranked dead last with Puerto Rico. It's a toss up on which day who is the worst. And uh, at that point, uh, they say, oh man, we need another $300 million to help out K through 12 and the University of Alaska, which also ranks the one of the worst in the nation. And we're going to give that $300 million to them instead, on top of medical increases of another $100 million, which always seems to happen every year, and this year was no exception. So they now take that extra $300 million, and they now have a $6 billion budget. Well, under their SJR 5 and their new rules for SJR 6 and SB 53, if any or all of these are passed at the same time, basically the bottom line is that $6 billion budget, 
There is now nothing left to pay us our permanent fund dividend. Zero. Nada. Zilch. And there's nothing us Alaskans can do about it. We don't get a vote on the matter. We don't get to decide what the future of our PFD would be. They just legislatively chose upon their 60 member selves to go ahead and appropriate all of the permanent fund dividend just for themselves. The only reason why they did not bring up SJR 1, Bill Wilikowski's bill, is because that bill enshrines our permanent fund dividend under the original statutory formula into the Constitution of Alaska. So in other words, the statutory formula that has been paying out our permanent fund dividend for decades before Governor Walker came and stole in our first one and legislators then on after, this bill would protect it forever and for on into the future, generations down the road, our children would be able to receive their permanent fund dividend under the statutory formula. The only part about SJR1 that I don't approve of, but you know, there's got to be some give and take somewhere, is it still carves out the POMV draw of 5% for our legislators to use to pay for state and government's budget. I don't agree with it, I don't like it, but hey, when you're looking at bills that are going to change the fundamental way things have been for decades upon decades, you got to compromise sometime. Because bottom line to it, if this happens, SJR1, our statutory PFD under the original formula would be in the Constitution of Alaska. In other words, our legislators can't legislate their way into stealing a portion of our permanent fund, like they have been doing for the last six years, to pay for state and capital budget. But it still allows them an additional 5% draw above what their share is to go ahead and cover state and capital budget expenses. What does this mean to our legislators? It means that they got to do their damn job and cut the budget. They are going to have to streamline to match the revenue that is coming in. They're going to have to do something about making sure that we can expand our resource extractions going on around the state. Whether that's fishing, hunting, um, collection of timber, or mining, or oil, whatever it takes to increase that revenue. They need to be passing laws that protect the rights to be able for Alaskans to be able to extract the resources of one of the most richest states that we have in the United States of America. They don't want us to acknowledge that when we became the 49th state of the United States of America that we gave up our mineral rights underneath the ground to be able to set, show the federal government, the lower 48 at the time, that we could afford to pay for our own bills without being a drain on the federal budget reserve, the taxes that we pay into our federal taxes every single year. This is what that accomplished for Alaska. When they opened up the first permanent fund dividend account under the, the PFD Corporation, they had $900 million extra money and they, they decided to invest that money. And then in, by 1982, they had decided, oh, hey, you know, we, we need to create a, a system to be able to start paying Alaskans a share of the oil wealth, the minerals, uh, the mining, the timber, the fishing, a portion of that wealth that has been going into this fund, we're going to now pay them a dividend. They changed the formula a couple times during that short little period until they finally found one that was constitutionally and legally able to do, which is where our statutory PFD came from and where they had been paying it out for decades until Governor Walker and our Supreme Court changed the wording from shell now means may, it's no longer you shall pay it, it shell and may means the th same thing when it comes to our legislators, that the appropriation is that the, the transfer is now an appropriation to the legislation. The changing of those two words from shell to may and from transfer to appropriation is how they accomplish the theft of our permanent fund dividends, something that they will not stress upon when they are talking to us about what they are doing. They don't want us to know the history. They don't want us to acknowledge that we Alaskans gave up our resources to the state of Alaska, but we are still the shareholders of those resources. We are the watchdogs, the, the, the ones that sit there and make sure that our government does not spend away our mineral wealth 
our rights, our, our God-given rights as being an Alaskan to share within the wealth that is underneath the ground or in the waters or growing on top as in the form of trees, so on and so forth. Never forget, Alaskans own the permanent fund dividend. Nobody else Alaskans do. Our government, our state government, does not have the right to be stealing our money to pay for state and capital budgets without our consent. But they're doing it because nobody is out there is trying to do a darn thing to stop them. <coughs> Excuse me. The bills that they currently have out there, all the ones that they discussed today, capping of the permanent fund dividend, SJR 6, uh, another form of the constitutional budget, uh, I mean, uh, another form of the, uh, the statutory PFD, but it leaves in the language of may pay it to us if they feel like it. It goes hand in hand with SB 53, which changes the formula completely and then also combines the ERA and the corpus of the account into one account. So no, they are no longer separated and protected. Um, and, and it takes away the protection of the corpus, too. So does SJR 6. They both take away the protection of the corpus. The only way our legislators can touch the corpus account is by the vote of the Alaskans. This is why they have not touched it since day one, and they only go after our ERA. If these bills are to get passed, this will open up Pandora's box and give our legislators upon their own discretion of a 51% vote. They do not need two-thirds vote. They do not need three-quarters. They don't need any of that to be able to tap into our EA, ERA right now. They only need a 51% majority vote. The only way we're going to protect our permanent fund dividend is by passing a statutory law that is going to be protected under our Constitution. There is only one bill, which they did not discuss today, which is SJR 1, that accomplishes that. They refused to bring it up past the first committee hearings that I heard it on. Please go to, it was about a week, week and a half ago, they discussed SB 53, SJR 6, and uh, the, the other one that is there, I think it's SBR 5 um, or 7, one of those two. All the ones that had to do with the permanent fund dividend. And all of those bills, you got to listen to legal, you got to hear their definitions of what these bills are there to accomplish. All of them steal the permanent fund dividend permanently. It gives the legislators the ability to make sure that we will never see a permanent fund dividend again. It is all up to their discretion on whether or not we will get one if those are to pass. Call your legislators. Email your legislators. Tell them no on all of these bills. Demand that they get SJR1 up onto the books. That that's the bill that they start pushing through. If they want to cap on the budget, uh, which I believe is what SJR5 was, if they want to cap on the budget, that's fine, but remove our permanent fund dividend from underneath that cap. Our PFD does not belong underneath a state and capital budget's cap. Our PFD is not to be paid with tax revenue. It is supposed to be a transfer from our ERA. But as I noted in my own testimonies that I had given them earlier today, I pointed out the fact that they are using tax revenue the last two years to pay our permanent fund dividend with their self-imposed tax or cap that they have put on it under SB 21, the, the one that they, uh, or SB 26, uh, I think that's it, SB 26 is the one that they they, pulled, they, they converted their POMV draw and then said we've got this fake make-believe cap that we have to stay underneath to be able to pay you your permanent fund dividend, which is where they came up with our $600 million from last year. They said $6 billion is our make-believe cap, and your permanent fund dividend is stacked, stuck underneath that cap. So after spending $5.4 billion on the state and capital budget, there's only $600 million left. That's the only PFD that you're going to get. This is what SJR5 does. It is a cap. It caps the state and capital budget, and it caps our permanent fund dividend underneath that cap, up to the discretion of the legislators on whether or not they want to spend it. The only one there that I did support partially was the voting of Alaskans to be able for taxes. If we are to have any new taxes imposed on the state of Alaska, that that bill would allow us to have a vote put onto it. 
It needs to be passed by a majority of Alaskans. I would say two-thirds of the voters need to vote yes to make that happen. This can't be a 50-50 split. This can't be a 300,000 voted no, 300,001 voted yes, the 301,000 gave us a new tax. No, it needs to be at least a two-thirds vote or a three-quarters vote of the Alaskans that are voting on whether or not any new taxes would be placed into place. On top of that, this bill does not cover existing taxes. As I had pointed out during my testimony, they want to double the gas tax that we pay because it's already an existing tax. Us Alaskans wouldn't get to vote on whether or not they increase that tax. They could just do it through the legislative session. So even though it is a great idea to say Alaskans get to vote on any new taxes, it does not address the problem when it comes to existing taxes and them increasing them to astronomical prices that we Alaskans can't afford. All right, I'm off of my soapbox. I think I've covered everything there. Please go watch the video earlier this week, or about a week, week and a half ago, that addressed the SB 53, uh, SJR 6, SJR 7, um, and where they talk about the permanent fund dividends and how these different bills are to work, and then go and look up the one for SJR 5 when it comes to capping the budget and how they slid our permanent fund dividend underneath that cap. All those videos are well worth watching. The one from a week and a half ago, though, covering the three PFD bills and SJR1 is well worth your time to go and watch. SJR6, SB53, they are nothing more than a legal way for them to continuously steal more and more of the PFD, and ultimately there will not be one left for us Alaskans We've seen how well our legislators work together when it comes to protecting Alaskans' interests. If it's not for the special interest minority that, that whose interests they are protecting, they can care less about the majority that does not fall in those special interest categories. Like and share this video. Alaskans need to hear the testimonies of the people that had called in today, the few that seemed to actually acknowledge that this was happening. I had done several posts on this today uh, trying to alert people that this was happening today after I had found out from the governor's website, and uh, but they, they, they reached absolutely nobody. Facebook is doing everything in their power to make sure that anything that goes against the agenda that they want to have in play is not reaching any of my 3,000 plus followers out there. Uh, you know, we got 3,500 people that follow Politidic. And both of the posts for this happening today have reached less than around 60 people. And not a single one of them, I don't think either one of them got a single like on them because it was Facebook made sure that they did not propagate so that you guys were informed that they were taking testimonies today. That Alaskans needed to call in, that Alaskans needed to be participating in what was going on right now. They made sure that our voices have been silenced. It's sad to know that Facebook is working this way. I'm not giving up the... I am going to keep battling against Facebook. I'm going to keep on posting. I'm going to keep putting my messages out there. I'm going to keep alerting you Alaskans what is going on. And uh, you do the same thing. I mean, it's liking, sharing, coming and visiting the page daily. Facebook may not be sending you messages that my page even exists anymore, that I'm posting things. I am posting things. But you're not getting any notification that I'm posting things. This is Facebook's way of suppressing our reach to you, our followers, who are interested in understanding the politics that are going on locally and nationwide. I try to be uncut, unfiltered, and that's what this is. Thank you all for joining us here this afternoon. I hope that the testimonies given on these different bills was worth your time. Please send an email in to them, and if you did not get a chance to testify, all of these bills got moved over to the next committees to be heard. So they are as they are right now. Not a single one of them are any good. There may be more changes that they may do to these bills down the future that may change a lot of the stuff that I have problems with. But I don't see that happening. Um, it is not the will of our legislators down there to work for the majority. It is the will of our legislators to try to bamboozle us out of as much of our permanent, rightfully owned permanent fund dividends that we legally are supposed to be receiving but they continue to keep stealing 
And uh, so one day I hope that things change, but I don't see that happening. Six years tells me that they are not, they have no interest in doing the will of the people, but the will of the minority special interest. Like, share, go to my website, politic.com, click that donate button, click that support button, take your choice. They both take you to almost the same, same page. Make a contribution today. Every penny goes right back into making sure that when the important things are happening, I can afford to be here to live stream these things. And uh, if it wasn't for me having a good day of being able to wrap up my jobs early, I wouldn't have been able to live stream here today also. Thanks to our governor lifting the restrictions and no longer being under a declared emergency, I went from not having a, uh, having a lot of time on my hands because I had no work to where now I'm actually seeing more work coming in than I have time. And I'm not complaining. God knows I'm not complaining. I've been needing it for way too long. Just go to my website, politidict.com. Click that support button. All contributions. Make sure that I can be here to be able to do this. I would like to be able to do this full time. That would take every single one of you guys making a contribution of no more than $5 a month. If I could get all 3,500 of you guys out there to contribute just $5 a month, I would no longer have to turn wrenches and do the job that I do uh, to, to earn a living. I could be here doing this all day long, live streaming the most important stuff that is going on down in Juno so that we're all on the same page, receiving the most information in regards to what these bills are, taking away the time that you need to be able to learn and understand them. I can take the time to be able to myself to absorb what they're saying and what they're trying to do and then relay it back to you in a common language something that is not full of this bill number that bill number here's the nuts and bolts of what they're trying to do thank you all again for sharing and thank you for being here today you all have a great afternoon and enjoy the warm weather that's rolling back into alaska have a good one